It's Movie Time is brought to you by the Gateway Film Center, 1550 North High Street, Columbus, Ohio. Further details and showtimes online at gatewayfilmcenter.com. The award-winning It's Movie Time is produced by John DeSanto. Listen to the shows and read reviews online at wcbe.org. I'm John DeSando. I'm Wayne Miller. Now, Wayne, my T-shirt. Uh, you, your buddy Cato. I know. Cato Kalin crashed on my couch. It, uh, <laughs> that, that brilliant and witty guy is a mutual friend of Wayne's and mine, and yeah. putting me in the mood oh. for frat boy comedy. I don't know why. He's a houseboy. He's but a houseboy. <laughs> <me think laughs> but that, he would fit in. He would fit He'd in. He'd fit in. <laughs> and this one is probably this one we're reviewing right now today. This, yep, yeah, this one right there. Neighbors. Neighbors. And it writes up there with some of the best of those uh, frat houses. Yes. You know, like Animal House and Revenge of the Nerds and right. old school things right, like that. Right, right. I think it's a good mashup of not only that subgenre of the parting frat house, but also uh, a unique kind of uh, comedy uh, genre that's going on right now about young marrieds. You yeah. know, with children, you know, trying to regain their youth, but also some of the gross-out type of humor oh, that, yeah. that people love with movies like The Hangover and Bridesmaids. Yeah. You know, and it's it's true. This is the kind of uh, movie that, uh, or comedy, that Judd Apatow had become really the reigning king of. Right. And you can just feel it. And and Rogue, Seth Rogen is, of course, oh, yeah, from one that, of his from players. This, well, yeah, like from Knocked Up, which was <laughs> yes. another very, very funny uh, <laughs> no. uh, movie. And Rose Byrne, who plays uh, Kelly, uh, her his wife, right. so that he's, yep. he's Mac and she's uh, Kelly Radner's, right. uh, both of them play a couple who have a new baby. Yeah. And they're obviously former stoners, and they still would like to do a little bit more of that. But lo and behold, they're heavily mortgaged, and they have a cute as heck baby. <laughs> and I really like Rose Byrne. And uh, here, she was uh, affecting her natural Aussie accent. Yes, yes. And I'm very, I, I thought she did br brilliantly yeah, she's on a cable a TV series, John, called Damages okay. with Glenn Close. Okay. And it was about five seasons and it was one of the cable networks like TNT or one, AMC, one of those. Well, but, and she was br she's very good. And, and she was just as raunchy you know, well, as her husband. How about her role in Bridesmaids? Yeah. And that's where I first saw her and yeah. I had the same impression. She's very good. And, you know, in this film, she has to bear her breasts and do a whole bunch of things that any that a number of actresses might not do. Now, John, I was <laughs> as I was sitting there, I was wondering were those breasts prostheses? Oh uh, boy, I don't know. I, I think uh, just because of the look of them, and of course, uh, <laughs> a, a, a scene that we probably for our audience shouldn't go into too much detail. Well, about. The, the, I mean, the, the deal is that they have been drinking with the frat boys next door who are headed by Zac Efron, a very chiseled Zac, yeah. and trying to ingratiate themselves, playing the, you know, the, the good cop, bad cop, the older couple, but we're still cool. And she drinks too much and her breasts get too full. So he has to milk them. Right? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. oh my goodness. And then he breaks the milk machine. <laughs> so... Well, he uh, breaks the milk machine. But uh, there was one line during that scene that I think really kind of shows the subtle wit and humor and throwaway lines that they had because when he was kind of he says well gee what are we going to do next go out and go uh mom tipping you know kind of like right, cow yes, tipping. Yes, yes, yes. and i thought there were just some really good throwaway lines like that well, that uh that you really had to pay attention you to know, pick up and the people that went with me some of them thought this was a truly frivolous film and i didn't think so and one of the reasons i didn't think so was that some of those lines were very good that that rogan particularly tosses off almost yeah, to make you yeah. go back to the movie to see them again and i will make Perhaps some people, the purists, would consider this an odious comparison. But there's some of that screwball comedy in this. And there's some, particularly when he's with Byrne, when Rogan is with Byrne, there's a repartee there that it's certainly not Cary Grant and Rosalind Russell. But I'm going to tell you, there's some quick, witty lines going between those two. Well, you got me kind of thinking, John. Geez, <laughs> I could just picture maybe uh, Ricky Ricardo and Lucille. You know, Lucy. Oh, Lucy! Good. Very good, <laughs> yeah, yeah. with little, trying to nurse little Ricky, and they've both been drinking at the Copacabana <laughs> or something. Well, anyway, you pretty much got the idea of the plot. 
The frat boys move in next door, a whole house full of them, and they are interested in sex and uh, drugs, and just as you would have expected. It's all excessive, of course. You don't, yeah. don't go there. I'm, I'm sure there's no, and Wayne knows very well about college campuses, <laughs> particularly now, uh, since Franklin University has bought Urbana College, so yeah. he's quite much immersed in the liberal arts yeah. kind of college. And right. with the dean, you had to get a kick out of the dean. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, played by Lisa Kudrow. Yeah. did a good job with that. Now, the one thing, John, that uh, I, I would uh, really encourage the viewers to stay through the end credits. Because, and, and you know me, I'm not yes. a big one yeah. on little babies and child actors and actresses right. and stuff like that. But a very adorable little baby that Max and Kelly had. And at the end, they dressed the little girl up in the uh, clothing and even a little blonde wig as the dean. So uh, stay, <laughs> yes. stay through uh, the, the end credits because they're very, very funny, especially if you like, you know, uh, cutesy or adorable babies. And, and this there was, of course, they used twins. Yes, as oh, they usually have to. they do. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they can't. Yeah. But the other adorable person is Zach Efron, yeah, who yeah. is not only has worked at least a year on his body and oh, looks great, uh, yeah. but also kind of sharpened up his comedic skills. Yes, very deadpan. Yes, uh, you know. And the one thing, one of the reviews, I think, Entertainment Weekly that I was reading, and I think also in the week, you know, that magazine, they said this is a comedy with some heart. And I'm thinking, okay, and, and there were some, you know, as they were by, you know, uh, uh, Mac and uh, Teddy, you know, Zac Efron's character, they were bonding early in the film. And then at the end of the film, you know, there's kind of a, a big brother, little brother vibe going there. Well, and there it, is some heart in the bet. movie, but it's not overdone. And sometimes, even when they do it, like when uh, almost a homoerotic type of thing with uh, uh, Pete, Played by Dave Franco, yes. you know, the uh, the vice president of the uh, of of the, the fraternity. fraternity. I know. And he said, "I love you, man. I really do. I love you, man." And you can see how Zach Efron was getting more and more uncomfortable with that, but yet there was kind of a tinge there, especially since the Dave Franco character was the only one that carried uh, cared about graduating and, and getting a job yeah, afterwards. And two things about that. The first one is this is a, a good satire of the bromance, which has yes, for yeah, the last few yeah. years become very popular. Yeah. And and you have Rogan and Efron bonding uh, until <laughs> Rogan breaks the first rule, which is yeah. not to tell the cops. Yeah. And then it's warfare. And it's really very funny yeah. what the, the kind of warfare they devise with each other. The and they, uh, yeah. <laughs> so they eventually come to terms with this whole thing. And at the, and I love the, toward the end when he and Zaffron, when Rogan and Zaffron are in front of Abercrombie. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, yeah. and, and, he, and Rogan strips off his shirt because, of course, uh, Afron has his shirt off in front of Abercrombie getting the ladies to come in. And I think I think it's a wonderful satire. And I yeah. love Rogan yeah. because he lets all the fat hang out. Oh, gee. <laughs> yeah, a big, a big cuddly teddy bear. Oh, yeah. 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 And Rose Byrne, I think, looked very, you know, looked lovely, but yet she wasn't overly... Attractive. Right. I mean, you know, this is a woman who's, you know, kind of be beaten down by caring for the young infant and everything. Who, oh yeah. Like I said before, the young, the ba the ba the little baby actresses did an excellent <laughs> job. I mean, and, you know, and and these, what one of the things I like about the film is that it's not just about raunchy good times, yeah. fret boy. It's it, there is a serious subject. You alluded to it there with uh, Dave Franco's character. Who is actually looking for a job, interviewing for a job, because underneath this is the current of times are changing. These boys are going to graduate and they're going to face what Rogan and Byrne have faced, which is, are you going to become mainstream? Are you going to become parents? Are you going to own a house? What are you going to do? And eventually you do that. Yeah. So I very much like the fact that even if you remember that moment when uh, Efron faces the AT&T recruiter. Yes. <laughs> He said he's, in effect, he said he's too dumb. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the recruiter, you know, tried to kindly tell him, you know, when he was saying, well, what was your grade point average? Low twos, okay, high high ones, you know, and, and the guy said, well, we're really looking for somebody who, you know, a little bit, excelled a little more academically. Oh, well, okay. You know, it's kind of like, what, what's he going to do? And I like the fact that he just kind of turned away 
Efron turned yeah. away at that moment as a, a big beginning of a realization that his life is changing and the life of the so that's to me that's the social undercurrent of this that yeah. kind of rescues it from just being really low rent animal house yes and like I said that that uh, mashup of using you know some of the the, the whole thing about the the couple and trying to, they're going to go out and party, but they get, you know, as they're trying to pack up everything, they go uh, do so, pack up all the baby gear, and they fall asleep. You know, so that whole kind of, like you said, that undercurrent that plays very well as far as the adulthood, which is touched on in a lot of these other movies where people are trying to regain their youth. Yeah, and you know something? The two writers here, Andrew Cohen and Brendan O'Brien, yeah. are first-timers. Yeah. 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 So that's pretty great. So there's a freshness about this movie, but there comes a time when you and I have to grow up and get sober and actually apply a grade to yes. this film. Yes. So, Wayne Miller, we have neighbors. What's your grade? And I'm all, uh, a lot of people would rate it higher. I'm going to give it a B minus because I'm not that big a fan of, mis of uh, comedies. <laughs> yes. And I'm going to award it a B just to be different from you, but boy, yeah. I was somewhere in the C. Plus. B minus range. Yep. However, it's summertime, and I don't yep. see a whole lot of comedies around. So if you want a relaxed uh, uh, weekend, and you want to see a film, particularly if you're a college kid, particularly if you're a college male, because this is making fun of you yep. <laughs> as much yep. as anybody, <laughs> I think you will enjoy Neighbors. Yep.